All right, episode two of You Know It. Cue the tape. Spinning around. This time, brought in a real drummer, Charles Ruggiero. <laughs> we always have real bass players. Minnow is back. And real guitar players. Sort of guitar players. Yeah, no. The, the non-real instrumentalist today is the one holding the camera right now. Okay, got super lucky today to have my buddy Charles come in and play some real drums. <laughs> now. <laughs> I love it. Well, I thought this song was going to be perfect for you anyway. When I yeah. wrote this thing, I was like, oh man, this, this can't be me. This has got to be you. It's Charles Squared. Well, I don't go by Charles, so. That, yeah, there you go. Well, we and I don't go by Charlie. Yeah. So, so we're. So it's easy. It's easy to separate. <laughs> it's easy to separate. But when I called you, I think. I want to know, first off, what you're using and why you brought this, because I think my description to you was the cast of the Munsters got together, did acid with Dick Dale, and watched a spy movie. Yeah, so 60s. Yes. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, this is my main, this is my basically, like, most of my gigging setup. And this is what, when we've done Roswell live streams here, this is the kit that I've mm -hmm. brought. And, and I know that that's probably what you heard, probably helped you think of me, actually. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? So, yep. so when they talk about having a sound, that's why you want to have a sound. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a Yamaha, uh, it's actually, it's a stage custom Birch. As a Yamaha endorser, like, of course, I have all the best, you know, I have recording customs and a Phoenix kit and all that. But, but really what I use mostly is this kit, which is like the worst kept secret in drums <laughs> because they're the best. I mean, they're literally like they sound, they're the cheapest drum. They're the most inexpensive drums that Yamaha makes on a professional level. And I think they sound better than everything. The snare drum is a stock recording custom um, aluminum five and a half by 14. It's 18, 12, 14 inch. We did set. That was a decision after the first couple yep. recording that's recordings. That's the only muffling. That's yep. really the only muffling. There's a, there's a, um, a what do you call it? The, they're all, everything's got uh, just coated ambassadors around the whole kit. Uh, there is a, a hand towel, like a small hand towel washcloth, really, between the bass drum pedal I'll and get, the. I'll get a photo of yeah, that. Yeah, and the. Uh, and and the, you're using a big fuzzy beater, too. Yep. Yep, I've, I've gone, I, even on like heavy hitting stuff, I've, I've gone to a soft beater. Um, I feel like it gives more room for the bass. I've, you know, the punch, the, the, the attack of the note is more coming from the bass guitar. You know what I mean? Right. And in a jazz setting, you don't want a real heavy attack on, on the bass drum anyway, because when you're feathering and whatnot. And then the cymbals are, I've got 15 inch Karopes. And I've got, uh, and I brought on your request. I brought these symbols from the last time. These are all prototypes of Karope symbols. Um, also Zildjian. I'm a Zildjian endorser and a Yamaha endorser. So, uh, and Remo too. So this ride cuts so nicely. It's beautiful. And it's we beautiful. don't have a, you know, we baked all, you know, three microphones, but mm -hmm. it's baked into two tracks. Right. So there's, we're not readjusting anything after the fact. So it's yeah, it's my job. It's my yours. job. Yeah, it's my job. It's a drummer's job to balance the kit. Yep. And if you can do that, then you can do you can do a recording session where you have two overheads in a bass drum mic, and it's going to sound like people always talk about Bonham sound and all the you know like old school recording. Well, it's because those guys knew how to balance the kit because yep. they played live more than they played in the studio. Yep. So it's you know it's it. It's I love that. capturing kits this way. This is one of yeah. my favorite ways. You know. Because you hear I, the whole thing. I tell thing. Ernesto, who's back behind the camera, every time we do something and I set up 20 microphones, and then we'll go do a session when there's like three, and it sounds huge. I'm yep. like, why do I set up all yep. that stuff? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But man, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Awesome. Thank you. I had a blast. It's a great track. I really had this so much fun. This was my first time doing an organ session, like literally first time playing it, and I got to do it with him. This was, yeah. this was killer. So. Yeah, you were great, yeah. too. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. I can't wait to see it and hear it, you know? So Cool. Thanks, boss. All right, thanks, man. You guys have seen me. 
Benno on many videos with us here. <laughs> we torture him and he keeps coming back. But I always love your play. I mean, we worked together a long time now. Since like, what, the first tour was 99? 99. And I, and Nin I think 1899 we, or 1999? At this point, it's kind of pushed out. <laughs> and I think the, the guy that we toured with fired the other bass player a week before the tour, and you learned everything and left town on a week's notice. It yep. Was, it was, that was an interesting tour. We won't get into that. No. Uh, but anyway, today, I think I told you the same thing I told Charles when you and I talked the other day was, it's the cast of the Monsters got together with Dick Dale, dropped some acid, and watched a spy movie. James Bond. James Bond. Yeah, I said James Sean Bond. Sean Connery. Right? Yeah, the Sean Connery James of Bond. Of course. Not the new ones. No, no, no. We ended up with, we've seen this bass now yep. a couple times. What is this? The P bass. The sort of Frankenstein P bass. Nothing special, just regular P bass. And it sounds good. With it's a P bass. It's a P bass. <laughs> Fender P bass. What else do you need? Nothing, apparently. It's awesome. Sounds great. Plays but there great. is one little kind of trick you're doing here. The Bob Babbitt sponge. Bob Babbitt, the second bass player in the Motown studios, did not have the ancient strings that James Jameson had. So he had a little household sponge that we, he would put under strings to kind of get that dead string muted sound. So that's what I did. And then I decided to go for a pick, um, kind of because of the, that Carol Kay vibe. Yep. You know, so the Wrecking Crew meets Motown, meets Surf, meets the Munsters, meet the, our on LSD, meet Dick Dale and watch Talking to Sean Con Connery. Yeah. Yeah. So. Or watching Sean Connery. <laughs> that's it. But dude, this thing sounds great. We ran through the polytone, the little mini brute, just nice and tight, and it sounded fantastic. Man. Yeah, I dug it. Thanks again, dude. You rule. Thank you. That's cool. I mean, it's just like no distortion whatsoever. Everything coming from the delay. It's great. I like it. That's my favorite. Well, I heard at that time. Cool. As far as the mix goes, we're not, like I said, we're not doing a whole lot. So why don't we do this? Let's take a listen to the individual just instruments real quick, mm -hmm. just so you can hear where we ended up, and then we'll do a whole playthrough. And we're going to start with what is known as the drums. And it's all, it's a little messy on purpose, right? Yeah. We, and we wanted it to be that. So what cleanup that we did do was really just to help things 
like fit together better, but we weren't trying to separate. We wanted the whole thing to feel yeah. very mm -hmm. uh, messy together in the room, so to sure. speak, you know. And it kind of, I think it works that way. The overdrive, that breakup you can hear yeah. on the guitar is so cool. <laughs> okay, now there's one more thing I want to go. Let's go to A. I'm just going to go to the top. The guitar fills, the rakes. Yes, four strings raking down. You know, great. I'm going to turn the MIDI verb off first so you can just hear what they sound like. And that was the, what you use, we use the space echo for that? Yeah. Here's the MIDI verb now. And it goes behind, here let me get the rhythm set. Great. And it just sits behind and it spread. it's kind of spaghetti western, but it just <laughs> sits behind the whole thing a little bit. Which we thought was really cool. We are doing no automation when you see the playthrough. This time around, there's going to be no clicking of anything on and off at all. So that's yeah, it. That's it, yeah. pretty much. One thing I want to mention, everybody, we have started doing memberships. We love doing these videos. It is a ton of work, but we want to keep bringing more. The more you can help us out, the more we can try to help you guys with the live streams, with these types of videos answering your questions in the comments and you know just helping you with your own studio i know times are tough it's hard sometimes for everybody there's not extra money totally get that even if you can't do it keep joining us on these videos the live streams we love having you around if you can't help us out we'd appreciate it because we're going to do more and more and more and with that thanks for joining us on this video we hope you enjoy it and i think it's time to play this whole song from start to finish let's do it all right y'all see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.